Okay, so another quick tutorial. Um, we're going to have a look at some splines, just relatively simple stuff. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to create a new layer because I want my uh, spline work to be on a different layer, and I'm just going to uh, fill in this layer with a black. Let's have a little black dress. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm going to switch to my other layer. And what I'm going to do uh, is use one of these brushes to uh, paste a pattern uh, onto our dress. Now you've got a couple of ways of doing it with the spline. Um, you could put uh, symmetry on here if you wanted to be really symmetrical about it. And then draw your spline uh, until it goes round and meets up at the other end. Now, that's alright, uh, but you might have a bit of trouble with um, the ends. Now, what I prefer to do, if I turn symmetry off, uh, is draw right round. Uh, you can spend time adding things up and making it all work nicely. When I'm somewhere near close, I'll hit close curve and it will join them up. Um, if you click uh, within one of the uh, curves, you can move it. So you've got a chance to, uh, you know, get things about right. I'm going to hit equalize there, and that will get them roughly equidistant apart. And if you hit subdivide, it will add uh, another one in, in between each of the points. So there we go. Okay. So I've got just a plain brush selected, and I'm going to select a white colour. Um, I'm leaving all of the uh, channels on, so press enter, and that should go away and um, fill in that spline. So there, yeah, that's a very simple kind of belt. Um, you could do uh, you know, stripes all over it, you could make it much bigger. Uh, you've got your width modulators and such like here to uh, mess around with, uh, but I'm just going to leave that about there. So that's how to do a, a standard pen. Uh, but if I undo that, what I want to give her is something like a chain belt. So I'm going to use this little chain uh, brush that we've got here. Now if we simply press enter here, uh, we end up with something like this, which is just streaks all around because it's just dragged that brush. What we need to use in this case is spacing. So you can adjust the spacing uh, figure, you can put that down to 80, press enter again, and there we go. It's uh, a little bit overlappy, and I'll just press escape so we can see it better, uh, but that doesn't look too bad. Looks alright to me anyway. Uh, it hasn't created much of a, uh, a bump on the, on the model, but it has got a bump. I'll uh, just control Z that and that one. If you want to make the bump a bit bigger, right click on the brush and move your mouse up and down. That will move the red profile uh, to give it a much deeper uh, thing. I mean this brush isn't very high res so it's not going to uh, give perfect uh, um, resolution but it's ok. So the other thing you might want to do is jitter it. Um, I'm just going to do a control Z. Uh, so spacing jitter. Uh, let's put a spacing jitter of 5 on it and see what that does. So that yeah, jitters your spacing, obviously. Uh, let's put that back to 0. Precision jitter is going to uh, move it up and down and around. Okay, so that's moving it around. Uh, you know, you have to kind of think up uh, uses for these. Uh, rotation jitter I've found useful in the past. Uh, I'll put 5 on that. Uh, in this case it's not greatly useful. Um, but, for example, if I picked a different brush, like my little skull here, oops, and uh, just take my profile down and press enter. So I have a uh, jumbly mix of uh, skulls rotated all around the place, which I, I quite like actually. Uh, control Z. Let's go back to our chain. 
The radius jitter will obviously change the size of your brush as it goes round. Okay, so we have uh, plus or minus there. And depth jitter obviously will, uh, we won't see it on this one because there's not enough depth. Uh, we'll adjust the depth um, around just to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, so that is splines in a nutshell. Um, very quick nutshell. That's how to put a design across along a spline. Um, I'm just going to go through some of these options here. Uh, now I haven't used too many of these. Uh, what I have used is sharp, and that points the ends of your spline. So if I press enter there. Uh, it will make absolutely no difference at all in this case because it's a uniform brush uh, but if I go to just a standard brush like that it makes no difference either excellent, that's really useful and makes me feel completely used uh, let's make that smaller oh, ok, well that just makes me look like a plonker but never mind uh, I expected that to uh, come to a point there uh, I think maybe if I wasn't on a closed curve uh, we might manage that nope, oh well it's possible because I've got the spacing on actually nope, not a clue uh, <laughs> it's worked for me before, it's not working for me now uh, this is the law of sod ok uh, let's go to uniform any others I've used there? Uh, no, I'm not interested in arrows and such like. That's just not interesting at all. Uh, flatten. Um, it's kind of flattens your angles. Nothing very exciting there. Right, here uh, we've got some interesting options. We've done subdivide and equalise. Uh, we can change that so it goes into a line. Um, which in that case isn't very clear, but if we unplug close curve, it might be a bit more sensible. Uh, what else we got? Uh, to circle, that will make it slightly more circular. Uh, toggle hardness, if you click on one of your points, it will toggle whether it's a sharp angle or a soft angle. And uh, if I move one of these, so you've got to take the toggle off first. Okay. It's not behaving, it's escape to get out of that then. So if I move that up there, you'll see. That's a relatively silly curve. That's a relatively uh, smooth curve. Toggle hardness on that one, it goes more angular. Toggle on that one, it goes more smooth again. Okay, so if I didn't mention it, um, to apply whatever brush you're doing to the spline presenter and to escape from it or to stop using it, escape gets rid of it for you. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm sure you've had use of splines in uh, various other packages like PaintShop Pro. Uh, it works much the same kind of way, really. Uh, don't want that closed. It's a little weird kind of cross going on here. So I did one, two, no. No. <laughs> going all over the place here. Never mind. So you draw designs, do what you like. OK, I think that's enough on splines, so I'll stop now. Hopefully it's not 10 minutes. Um, hope you get some use out of it.